Today we're going to work on interpreting the division of a whole number by a fraction. But first let's start by talking a little bit more deeply about what division actually means. Here's a simple division problem, 6 divided by 2. But what if I asked you to write this division problem without using the word division or divide? One way you might have come up with is how many groups of 2 are in 6, right? 6 divided by 2 is saying how many 2's are there inside of 6? We know that the answer is 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so we could answer it this way. There are 3 groups of 2 in 6. But let's see what 6 divided by 2 now looks like visually. Here's my 6 and we want to divide it by 2. We want to know how many groups of 2 are in 6. So I simply scoop out groups of 2 and I find out how many groups of 2 are in 6. And we see that there are 3, right? There's the orange, the yellow, and the purple if we color coded it. There are 3 groups of 2 in 6. Well, that makes sense. But did you know that there is another way that we can think through a division problem? Let's use the same problem, 6 divided by 2. We said before that this could be how many groups of 2 are in 6. But we can also say 6 is 2 groups of what size? Again, because we know the answer is 3, we know that 6 is 2 groups of 3. Now, that may not sound very different, but let's look at it visually. So again, here are the 6 that we're going to divide by 2. But this time we're going to focus on 6 being 2 groups of what size? So in order for us to solve this, we need to take our 6 and make it into 2 groups this time. And what are the size of these 2 groups? Well, the size is the amount of units in each group in this case, which would be 3. So, there are really 2 different ways to look at every division problem. For 6 divided by 2, for instance, we can ask how many 2's are in 6. We found that there were 3 groups of 2. We could also ask that 6 is 2 groups of what size? And we saw that there were 3 in each of the 2 groups. The mathematical terms for the differences in thinking about division is one of those ways is called measurement division while the other is partitive division. So the how many 2's are in 6? That would be the measurement division. We're trying to almost measure out how many of this thing, in this case 2's, are in 6. And 6 is 2 groups of what size is partitive division. It's almost as if we have the whole and we're looking at the size of each of the groups of a certain number. Visually, the measurement division looks like this. And visually, partitive division looks like this. Now again, there's not a lot that looking at it makes us see a difference. Yes, one had three groups and the other has two, but remember for one question we were asking how many groups, which was three, and the other we were asking what are the size of the groups, which is three. The answers are the same. So for every division problem, you can ask two different questions that will receive the same answer. How many blank is in blank or Blank is blank groups of what size? Let's use some measurement division to solve the following problems. How many half miles are in 12 miles? Okay, to write this out, I could simply write out how many. How many I could use a question mark. How many half miles? How would I write that? One way I could write it is like this. How many half miles? Okay, how many half miles are in 12 miles? How would I write are in 12 miles? Ah, there we go. How many half miles are in 12 miles? Okay, here is my mathematical equation. How many half miles are in 12 miles? Because of what we've learned previously, how many half miles is in 12 miles, we know that we can also rewrite this another way. This also says how many half miles are in 12 miles. The how many would be the question mark, and the half miles in 12 miles is that measurement division, 
which is 12 divided by 2, right? How many halves are in 12? That's what 12 divided by 2 asks if we're using measurement division. And of course, it doesn't matter which side the equal sign is on because it's going to equal the same thing whether the equal sign is on the top, bottom, left, or right. But how does this look visually? Here is my tape diagram. Here are 12 things. I need to divide them into halves. So I take each of the 12 and I cut them in half. I'm looking for how many halves there are in 12. And now I can simply count them if I wanted to. And I find that in 12, there are 24 halves. Can you count them? Do you see 24 halves in 12? So back to the original problem. How many halves are in 12? There are 24 halves within 12. How many quarter hours are there in five hours? Okay, how many quarter hours are in five hours? I'm just rewriting my things here. How many quarter hours are in five hours? So this is really saying five divided by one fourth. So visually, I could draw my five that I'm going to find how many fourths there are in. So here is my five but I want to know how many fourths there are. So that means for each of my one whole, I need to divide them into four parts because each of those would then be one fourth. Now, if I want to know how many one fourths there are in five, I would just count them. And I would see that there are 20 one fourths in five. How many one fourths are in five? 20. Five divided by one fourth is 20. And doesn't that sound strange? Normally, when we think of division, we think of having a smaller number, right? 12 divided by 6 is 2. But that isn't always the case. Because if you think about it, when you take 5 whole and you divide that into 1 fourths, you will actually have a lot more than just 5 1 fourths. Because each of 5's wholes will be cut into 4 parts. 4 times 5. That would give us 20 of them. Do you notice a pattern? 5 divided by 1 fourth is 20. 5 divided by 1 fourth is the same as 5 times 4. Why? Well, remember from the previous lesson, when we divide a whole number by a fraction or any number by a fraction, we are multiplying the reciprocal of that fraction. So 5 divided by 1 fourth would be the same as 5 times the reciprocal of 1 fourth, which is 4. Well, does this always work, Mr. Weikert? Let's check our problem that we worked on earlier. 12 divided by 1 half is equal to 24. Is it true then that 12 divided by 1 half is the same as 12 times the reciprocal of 1 half, which would be 2? Well, 12 divided by 1 half we know is 24, and 12 times 2 is 24. So, here's a new one. How many 1 third cups are in 9 cups. Ah, so this is measurement division. How many 1 thirds are in 9? We can write it like this. How many 1 thirds are in 9? Oh, we can rewrite that like this. How many 1 thirds are in 9? And we can move the equal sign around if we want to do that too. And so, according to what we've realized, 9 divided by 1 third should be the same as 9 times the reciprocal of 1 third, which is 3. 9 times 3 is 27, so 9 divided by 1 third is 27. Now, I'm going to show you some images and I want you to come up with the mathematical sentence of which this is showing. It's a division problem. How would we write it? So here's four circles. And now something has happened to these four circles. How would we write this as a division problem? Four whole divided or put into groups of one eighth, right? Each of these circles is broken into eight pieces. So one of these pieces would be one piece out of eight, one eighth. Four whole divided into one eighths, which we now know is the same as saying four times the reciprocal of one eighth, which is eight. Four groups of eight, which is 32. And if you count the total amount of these one eighths, you will see that there are 32 of them. How would we write this as a division problem? seven whole divided into fifths, which is the same as seven whole times five. And that equals 35. And if you count up all of the fifths shown here in the seven whole, you will count 35. 
Molly, she has nine cups of flour. If this nine cups of flour is three fourths of the amount that she needs to make bread, how many cups does she need? Because we know that Molly has only three fourths of the amount she needs, I'm gonna draw the whole thing that she needs, right? The one whole. I'm gonna split it into fourths because she has done three fourths of what she needs. And here are those three fourths. Now we can label that three fourths, but the truth is we know that that three fourths is equal to, in this case, nine cups of flour. So I can take out the three fourths and write nine there, even though it's only showing three boxes shaded because nine cups of flour is in this problem equal to three fourths of what uh, Molly needs to do for this bread. And what do you know? If we have three boxes and we say that all of it is nine, then we can take that nine and dump it equally into those boxes to find out how much each unit is worth. And nine divided by three is three. And so the question is, how many cups does she need to do the whole thing? Of course, if each unit is worth three, then we know that that last unit, that last fourth is also three cups. So the total amount of cups she would need would be three plus three plus three plus three, three times four, which is 12. A construction company is setting up signs on a two mile stretch of road. If the company places a sign at every fourth of a mile, how many signs will it use? It always helps me to reword the problem a little simpler. So I could write two miles of road, signs are set up every fourth of a mile, how many signs are needed? Okay, now I can draw this out visually. Here's a stretch of road. How long did they say it was? Oh yeah, two miles. So this actually is my tape diagram. Here's two miles. And I was told that every fourth of a mile they're putting a sign. So I need to somehow find out where fourths are in these two miles. Well, if I cut two miles in half, I know what that will be. That'll give me two miles, right? One mile and one mile. And I know that if I divide one mile in half, that will give me half miles. So a half mile plus a half mile plus a half mile plus a half mile, that'll be two total miles. So I'm okay now. But if I divide those half miles in half, that will give me fourths. And now I can see that fourth plus a fourth plus a fourth all the way down to the end. Visually, I can see how many fourths there are in two miles. And that'll help me with the question. Because remember, we're being asked for two mile stretch of road every fourth mile, how many signs will that be? Well, that's two divided by fourths. We wanna know how many fourths are in two. And now we know there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fourths, eight fourths in two. But that's not what we were being asked, was it? We were being asked about a road and some signs. So we need to make sure that our answer answers the complete question. There are eight fourths in two doesn't answer the question of how many signs. But if we rewrite it, we can say simply that the company will use eight signs. Now we've answered that question. Margot, she freezes eight cups of strawberries. If this eight cups of strawberries is two thirds of the total strawberries that she picked, how many cups of strawberries did she pick? Okay, what do we know? Margot, uh, she freezes eight cups of strawberries. Okay, here's eight cups of strawberries. We are told that those eight cups of strawberries are two thirds of the total amount that she picked. So I can draw two thirds. These eight cups are equivalent to two thirds of the total amount. Okay. But because we're being asked to find the total amount of cups of strawberries, I'm going to include that other third. So instead of having my two thirds only, I'll have three thirds because three thirds would be the whole. And because visually now I can see that those eight cups of strawberries fit nicely and equally, more importantly, in the two thirds, I know how many cups are in each third. I can see that there are one, two, three, four. Four cups of strawberries in every third. That helps me. How? Well, if the question is, how many cups of strawberries did Margot pick total? Then I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cups, but the total would be that extra third, right? Three thirds makes the total make the whole. So that would be four more cups. So eight plus four more cups of strawberries would be 12. Regina, she's chopping up wood. She's chopped 10 logs so far. Now, if those 10 logs represent 
five eighths of all of the logs that she needs to chop, how many logs total does she need to chop? Now remember, you can use any strategy that you know and understand to solve this problem. I could draw 10 logs and work with it this way. But because I am going to uh, work with cutting things up, I'm going to use a tape diagram. Okay, from the problem, we know that she chopped 10 pieces of wood. So I can make my 10. But we're also told that that 10 is equal to only 5 eighths of the whole. So 5 eighths means that the whole would be 8 eighths. So my 10 only make up 5 pieces of 8 total. Can you see that? Now because I can see that there are 5 pieces that I need to dump that 10 into, I know that each one is worth 2. So those 5 eighths, each one is worth 2. Which totally helps me because it now lets me know what the value of every single unit is, which is 2. And this helps me answer the question, well, how much total wood does she need to cut? And the total, as we can see, would be 8 groups of 2, which is 16. So let's review, what have we learned today? I hope, simply put, that today you've realized once again how valuable it is to draw things out. You can use various different strategies. There's many tools to use, but when we divide fractions or whole numbers by fractions or vice versa, it will always help to draw it out.